Hello people, welcome to another edition of Dose of Drew and we are doing Sunday Sharpenings with the Joy of Cooking S35VN Kiritsuke. But as I had mentioned in the review, if you haven't watched the review, you can go find that in my playlists. But I wanted to reprofile. It wasn't, wasn't the most even secondary bevel ever, but I wanted to redo it with my own anyway. So I wanted to do a 15 degree secondary bevel. I measured it, but just so you guys can see, it's around here somewhere. Where did my handy dandy little tool go? I want to make sure you guys can see this. It is, again, not anywhere near the levels of massive accuracy but it can be very useful especially on things like this Let's see if i can even get that to where you can see and right, now we're in the middle see how it splits right there that moves and moves and moves that's actually about a one degree per side primary bevel we won't worry about the second one it's all over the place but the primary bevel is about one degree per second which means that i can subtract a degree from the secondary bevel that i want and use some some sort of guide or something to get that now i just use these little widget angle guides <laughs> believe it or not that's all i just got a whole set of these things where to go there it is you got rubber bands if you want to strap them down. I just keep them handy next to the stone while I'm doing it, especially on the rough one, and just get it uh, get it profiled. Now this is an Atoma 140. This will do work fast on any steel. I don't care what it is. This will quickly abrade lots of thin edges okay knife edge steel stuff like that it's it as far as grit goes there's definitely rougher ones but this is this is pretty solid so i want a 15 degree secondary bevel it's one degree on this one let me get that more up right 14 degrees that's what we're going to do I'm, i start out on this side and i always come towards me I always pull towards me, don't necessarily come towards me. <laughs> oh, you may notice the old slicey dicey mug in the back there. We won't talk about that. He's in a timeout. <laughs> All right, so I'm putting it on the primary bevel. I'm holding it firm so I can get a really good idea of what that angle is. And then I'm doing the so-called wrist lock where i am grabbing this in a certain way with my hand and my wrist right and i am going to <clears throat> lock now when i move this doesn't move and i do everything else another way let me see if i can do this with the, even where the tripod is okay. Keep it flat and even. How do I know? Oh, I can take my hand off and, it, and it's flat. You probably didn't see that. It was off camera. So let me do it in a different spot. So. No difference between when I let go when I didn't. I'm still holding the angle. That's pretty good. So we can do the scraping as opposed to a long, which will help get rid of, especially in certain areas, will help get rid of material fast. Like if you're trying to really abrade down the tip or the heel or something, you can get a lot of material move, removed quickly that way. And really even out the size of your secondary bevel and the length when you go at an angle and do the long, do the lengthwise. We get a good scratch pattern. Check my angle again. Still holding true. Strokes, 
It's also really thin, so they don't have that much edge to it, that much metal to grind to get to it. So, we'll keep going. And I'm just going to really put some grinding time into it now that I've talked a little bit. Let's see if I can't get a bird to race. <laughs> about feel if you're laying down too much on that first couple of grinds you're just grinding a little bit and you actually get a different feel than when you're laying on a flat okay that's what I mean by feel when you lay on the flat it actually feels there's kind of a smoothness to it and if you roll up on the edge it kind of grinds a little too harsh and if you lay back, it kind of grinds a little too harsh because you're starting to grind down that. If you do it too much, then it's always ground down and it kind of loses some of the feel. If you start to uh, convex it just a little too much. But the Tomas also have their own feel. We'll get to that in a minute because the 140 doesn't really have it as much as the others, but it still does have it to a certain extent. But first things first. Just about everywhere. All right. So enough that I can do 30, maybe with a little bit of grinding, on this other side to get a more even bevel. I think that was 40. Thirty plus some grinding, so we'll see. Thirty is enough. No changes. It'll get a little bit wonky with my left hand, so I gotta be a little careful. Hold the angle good, but I can't the rock, so I gotta be careful with. Kitchen utensils out of the way here. Don't puncture the dawn. Reset my angle, make sure I haven't lost it. Good. Hazard with the Tomas, most of the lower grit. So that's it. 
I want a little bit of focus on the tip. That was an awful lot on this side. The other thing about running lengthwise when you have to do the tip is you don't run the risk of over sharpening the tip or dragging it as some people may call it a little bit where you lean it back and drag the tip or run it too long and over curve if you're running down the length it will but it takes a, a lot more of it. Lifting on the tip and grinding it down just a little bit. It took a little bit off the tip, but I think we can get it back. How are we doing? Lots of bursts, so that's good. Missing some right there. A little bit on the tip, but that, that extra bit was there, but let's get a little bit more. The belly needs a little bit of work, so. Definitely something around in Texas. I may need to take a little bit off this edge or to get it from the other side. Which would have been the first step here. Let's try this one. Still that one spot. Let's see if we can't take it down a little bit. Normally, I would just deburr with a couple of strokes here, but I want to bring this down with a straight hand. Thank <laughs> you. 
symptoms. And I, what is happening with this here bird? Definitely took it off. But S35VN number one is taking a lot. Really can't get to the same burger. Interesting. Got the five or six. Something. Surprised at how much this isn't working on some. So. Decent enough evenness that way. But not raising a burr again real evenly. We'll go for another 10. Don't want to grind it all away, but I want a burr here. No, I do not use my diamonds with uh, any solvent or anything like that. You most definitely can, but I do not. Right, I'm going for another 10 straight. This is in strangely hard to... Uh, VN, it should not be this hard to pull a burr. It was earlier. So 
Let's go for the 10 straight. I can pull even a little bit after the 10 straight. I'll go back to 10 on the other side and see what we can get. Ching ching, all oh, one flat here. Pull a small bird all the way across. There we go, finally. Wow. Took more work than I expected. Something must have gotten off. Or it's just the work of how wonky that secondary bird was. It's taken longer than I expected. But goes to show. What in the wood goodness gracious? Yeah. 
feel the tiniest of burrs, and that is enough. Back to this side. I'm just going to do the five or six to try and knock that burr off. take most of the burp off. So I actually just do three from here. Come back. Bring it in. These usually aren't enough to take a burr. Back to uh, it's just three, two, one, and a couple of those uh, single edges. Just counting them down, keeping the strokes even as close as I can. Here's the thing to remember. If you're worried about the evenness of the sides, the more strokes, like if you missed a couple of strokes, the more strokes you're doing over all that are even, the less that one or two off will matter. That makes sense. As a percentage overall. It's okay to make mistakes. Try to keep it a minimum. This 140 is pretty cool, and I promised I would talk about the Atomas, and I will. They have these dots. And they have these dots. The diamonds are put in dots. They tend to run actually a little rough for the grit rating. So the 140 is actually a 100, approximately a 100 micron. But the diamonds are only in these sort of checkerboarded dots. It would almost be hexagonal. Like the lines make hexagons, but the dots are inside those hexagons, if that makes sense. They make crisscrosses and all sorts of other stuff. But it provides a place for swarf to go. It's not that I don't rinse my stones, which I do. Um, actually, I'm going to do my single bits here. Do a couple of single strokes per side. Um, I do, and I'll rinse the swerve off, but there's plenty of room in most of them for the swerve to go. And if you don't go fast enough, especially on the rougher grits, the diamonds can actually move your blade out along some of those ley lines. The ley lines not being like energy lines or some weird stuff. It's the lines that the uh, dots were laid around. It might push it. So there's kind of a... smoothness it requires it's it's 
If you learn on Atomas, you can sharpen on anything, but the feedback will be different and probably lacking. And here's why. And almost every other stone, the feedback, and it may sound like it when you hear this, that the feedback is somehow staticky or random. And I can assure you with the Atomas, it's not as much as it sounds. Everything else is, especially compared to the Atomas. Um, it is generally static, staticky in all sorts of... The feedback is kind of like listening to a constant static on your TV. If it were to suddenly change, you would notice. And that's kind of what the feedback is on most stones. Diamond stones, water stones, all of it. Right? That That's... The Atomus is actually different. And I don't have the other stones right here, and I'm not going to use this knife to do it. Um, th with the regular patterning, they tend to make a tone. And it comes at the expense of a little bit of visual feedback in that there's more shadow underneath the edge, and that's hard to get used to. So, if, especially on the rough grits, like the 140. So, if you're someone like me who is used to, without, you know, without using something like the uh, grit meter here, or the angle meter, or whatever, who does a lot of it, not so much by feel, feel, but also visual to make sure I'm, like, in the ballpark, and then kind of feel to get it really dialed in. Um, this doesn't do as good on the visual. It's a lot more... But the feel is sublime. Right, that's a couple of... That's pretty good for 140 grit, I will say. All right, let me get this out of the way. Now, I was going to do all Atoma all the way, but there's something else I want to do, and I want to try it. And uh, here's why. I need to break in a stone. And I need to try the S35VN because it can be done with, especially on the rougher ones. That is the new Rockstar 320. This is a uh, 40 micron instead of a 45. So it is, it's actually really close in micron size to the 400 Atoma, believe it or not. It is a splash and go. So this one will require a little bit of water. If we can't get it, just... I have already surfaced this. I recommend if you don't have them, you get a set of the Sabutori Rust Erasers. This is the rough. It's great for uh, lower grits um, and medium and fine. Fine is really good for anything over about any. The 3000 Nanua sticks to this like glue. It's about the same grit. This is somewhere around 1500, I would estimate. And this is somewhere around. Um, 400 600 it's probably as close to 600 when the, the grit size is taken into account it's not bad but they all do a really good job of helping to surface work work like uh dressing stones and all that sort of stuff and you can take a lot of the initial surface off but i still haven't broke in the stone so let's see if we can't do that where's my handy dandy magic angle guide Get my little It here. Mm -hmm. We have a splash and go splashed and ready to go. So let's try this again. See if we can't raise a bird per side with the old Shampton Rockstar 320. Ooh. Twenty. 
crunchy and no burr. This might be this might be rough going, more rough than I really, really want with that scary five man. 20 with no burr. This might be a second video. In fact, you know what? That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna stop right now, start another video. So I got a burr with the 140. I'm gonna start this as a new video. We're gonna come back with the Shapton. There was Joya Cooking S35VN reset to 15 degrees per side on the secondary bevel. We'll come back with the next video. Oh, almost forgot. Go ahead, take this video, watch it twice. Comment as much as you like. Be mindful of side effects. Remember to like and subscribe. This has been your dose of Drew. I am said Drew. You guys have a great rest of your night.